knowing how to admit a patient to the hospital quickly, efficiently, and safely is a very essential skill for any provider who will be taking care of hospital patients. In this new video series from Hospitalista channel, I will exactly teach you that. I will teach you everything you need to know about this process. In this video series, we will be covering the following. Where admissions come from? What kind of information we need to get when we notified about an admission, whether coming from our emergency department or an outside facility? Should we accept this admission or not? Should we accept a transfer from an outside facility or not? How soon should I get the admission done? What to do if I have too many admissions? How to write admission orders in which we will cover the following as well. How to write quick interim admission orders? Deciding observation versus inpatient status. And this is something we have to know if we practicing in USA. Which floor should we send our patient to? And how to make sure our patient go to the assigned floor not to a different unit. What kind of diet should our patient have? We will talk about different kinds of diet orders, different NPO orders, and when to use them, fluid restriction orders, and when and how to use them as well. How often should we check vital signs on our patients? Different nursing orders, which includes things that you expect your nurses to do on top of routine patient care. Like if you want to add AccuChecks, strict INOs, daily weight, fall precautions, seizure precautions, etc. What labs to be ordered? What imaging to be ordered? What PRN or as needed medications to be ordered? What skilled therapy is needed? Skilled therapy, I mean physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy. Are social services, discharge planners, case managers needed? And we'll explain that in more details in future videos. Before we start, make sure to tap that subscribe button if you have not subscribed to our channel and turn on the notification bell to get notified about, about our new videos as soon as they are released. So let's start. The admission process starts from the moment we get notified about admission. So where this notification will come from? A hospital admission can come from the following sources. Can come from the emergency department, of course, the majority of those. Can come as a direct admission from a local doctor office trying to send his patient and bypass the ED from the PACU, the post anesthesia care unit, as some post-operative patient needs to be admitted for further observation and management, and patients coming as transferred from outside. These patients coming from outside facility can be either coming from inpatient to inpatient, patient who's already admitted to at another facility and needed to be transferred for a higher level of care. So from inpatient to inpatient, from the floor to the floor, or from ED to inpatients, from an outside ED to be transferred directly to the floor, not to our ED. And third, from emergency department to emergency department, from an outside emergency department to our emergency department. Here, the our emergency department physician, not us, will be the accepting physician. And then we get notified about this admission by our own emergency department physician if needed to be admitted. It is very important to note that in USA, the internal medicine team is basically what we call the hospitalist team, which means we can admit all sorts of cases, including pure surgical and OBGYN cases, especially if they have associated medical problems. Internal medicine usually are the primary teams and other services usually consulted as deemed appropriate. I know that this may seem weird for those who practicing somewhere else where surgical patients admitted to surgery, internal medicine patients admitted to internal medicine, but this is the case here. So don't be surprised if you have a young patient with gallbladder needs just laparoscopic cholecystectomy that gets admitted to internal medicine. So you will be receiving a phone call either from the ED physician at your facility, the surgeon who wants to admit a patient from the PACU, a local doctor trying to admit his or her patients directly to the floor and bypass the ED, or the transfer center trying to connect you to the transferring physician. First, whenever it's your turn in taking admissions, make sure you have an organized sheet, write down all the admissions notifications. That way you don't get any patient lost, especially when it's too busy. It happened before, that the patient admitted and next day the patient forgotten about and the patient has only interim orders 
but nobody went to see that patient because it just got lost the night was too busy so we do not want this to happen so please make sure every notification to write it down so in this sheet make sure you write the patient name medical record number of applicable location if applicable the reason for admission and time of notifications make sure you keep this sheet in your pocket do not lose it every time you get a call from a physician or about an admission we need to make sure we get the following information so every time we need to find about an admission make sure you get the following patient name and date of birth and write them down please get their medical record number and their location as well if they are coming from our facility ed and don't hesitate to ask the physician to repeat saying the name or spelling the name for you if they are coming from outside whether as a direct admissions or a transfer from an outside facility on top of the above information make sure you get the name of the transferring provider the name of the transferring facility estimated arrival time and make sure to tell them to update you on any significant change in patient clinical conditions or any relevant new labs or imaging information or anything that may affect your clinical manage management of that patient until they get to the floor you don't want to miss a patient develop stimmy while at the other ED and you miss that make sure to write all admissions in a very organized fashion so you won't miss seeing any patients especially when there is a busy shift too many admissions to handle write also the time of notification as this gets closely tracked by the hospital administration to see how efficiently we moving patient from ED so it is not about the patient needing to be admitted or not but also do you have the needed services at your facility or not and let me give you some clinical scenarios to explain this point and make it very clear for you. We received a phone call from transfer centers. There is a physician in the emergency department of a small rural hospital, have a 42 year old lady came in there with abdominal pain and found to have common bile duct stone, cholecholithiasis with elevated bilirubin and asking to transfer her to our facility looking for GI services as the patient will need ERCP. Of course, when I receive this phone call, this patient needs to be admitted. We agree on that. Should this patient come to our facility? Then I ask, do we have a gastroenterologist that can do the ERCP? And do we have a general surgeon that can perform the cholecystectomy? So if I do have these two services, I will gladly accept this patient. Our emergency department physician called us for a 70 year old patient who came in with headache and CT head show intracranial bleed. So there is no doubt that this patient needs to be admitted to neuro ICU or ICU if you don't have specialized neuro ICU. But the question now, do I have the services he needs? Do I have what? neurosurgery of course and our facility did not have neurosurgery on call that day so i immediately i i told him as far as i know i don't have neurosurgery in call tonight so i cannot accept this patient you need to transfer this patient somewhere else and that's what happened so sometimes you do have a neurosurgery like maybe you have a neuro one neurosurgery that covered the hospital so this neurosurgeon is not on call every night so make sure that you have a neurosurgeon call that willing to come and see the patient right away so even if you have a neurosurgeon i will not take this patient because this neurosurgeon is not on call and he's not obliged to come and see this patient so sometimes they'll tell you oh the neurosurgeon we call him and he said he will come tomorrow morning to see this patient i refuse I said, unless there is a neurosurgeon that will come and evaluate this patient or willing to come to see this patient as soon as possible, I will not admit this patient and this patient needs to be transferred as soon as possible. So that's another scenario. The patient needs to be admitted, but we don't have the services at our hospital during that night. Very important that the service could be available next day, but you're talking about that moment. Can your patient wait till tomorrow and if yes, if you feel can safely wait till tomorrow, then you can admit this patient and make sure the physician will be willing to see him next day. But if the patient like this patient intracranial bleed, there is no way I can say oh, it's safely to wait till tomorrow. A 45 year old patient with a chronic pancreatitis related to alcoholic pancreatitis came in with abdominal pain, fever and leukocytosis. CAT scan in the abdomen showed pancreatic pseudocysts. So the ED physician called us saying he thinks these pseudocysts are infected and he would like to admit this patient to us. So of course this patient needs to be admitted. Yes, there is no doubt about it. These infected pseudocysts could be infected. Yes, 
Absolutely. The question, do I have the services that will help me treat this, these pseudocysts? And in these cases, sometimes I don't have enough information or I don't have the knowledge to decide that. So I reach to our general surgeon. Hey, uh, the ED called me with this case, a uh, possible infected pseudocyst. So that specific surgeon felt that we don't have the capability to treat these infected pseudocysts. He thinks that these pseudocysts, if infected and need to be drained, it's better to be drained endoscopically by ultrasound, endoscopic ultrasound, and we did, and we did not have that capability. So I told the ED physician that, and I told him transfer this patient to a facility that can do endoscopic ultrasound. And that's what happened. Now, sometimes some other surgeon, they may say, Oh, bring them in, give them antibiotic and see how they do. So I would follow their guide. But the surgeon I talked to that night, he advised to transfer that patient to a tertiary care center that can do endoscopic ultrasound. So again, that's an example. We, the patient needs to be admitted, but we did not have the service for that. The last example, a 68 year old patient with chest pain, the ED physician called us saying the patient had some EKG changes like ST depression, no ST elevation, positive troponins. He asked us to admit this patient. So absolutely, this patient needs to be admitted, right? But the first question, of course, he already mentioned that he already talked to the cardiologist on call. So I was very glad to admit this patient because the patient needs to be admitted and we have the services to take care of this patient. Next video, we'll talk in more details about this first phone call you get when you're notified about any admission. And we'll talk specifically about the relevant clinical questions you need to ask. What information, the clinical information you need to ask, because that will help answer this question if we have this, if the patient needs to be admitted and if we have the services. Also, it will help you assign where your patient should go, which floor, ICU, regular floor, medical floor, telemetry floor. So we'll talk about that next video. I'll see you then.